Joining me now for more on the new video that emerged and the crisis in Syria is Phyllis Bennis. She's the director of the New Internationalism Project at the Institute for Policy Studies. Uh, Phyllis, I'm not going to ask you for your reaction to this because I think everybody's reaction is the same. Revulsion. But I am going to ask you what a piece of video like this with lightning fast internet, what this does to stir things up in Syria. I think it does two things. Inside Syria, it's certainly going to be the, one of the most provocative, antagonizing things one can imagine. It's just going to infuriate more people. But I think it also may have an impact on the diplomacy that's underway. And that is to say that I think it's going to make it even harder for those in the U.S., in Congress, in and out of the administration, who are pushing for war, who are pressuring the Obama administration to take a more direct military role in this war, it's going to make it much more difficult for them to say we, there's a, a good opposition. There's, yeah, we know there's bad guys in the opposition, but there's a good opposition. Because apparently, from what we know, if, it's, if it is true, the person who did this is from the Free Syrian Army, not from the Al Nusra Front, not from the Al Qaeda side. So that's going to make it even harder, which is, in my view, a very good thing, to make it harder for President Obama to even consider greater direct military engagement. It, well, let's talk also about it, it, the wider conflict. Uh, there, this episode in Turkey this weekend, and, and you and I talked about this not too long ago, that, that this really is a, a tinderbox. It can, an ex, the whole region could explode. What does that do? The region has exploded. The region, we're seeing this all over. We're seeing this in Iraq. We're seeing this in the new threats against Iran. We're seeing this with the cross-border violence between Syria and Israel. We're seeing it with the explosions of violence involving refugees in all the countries surrounding Syria that are taking on hundreds of thousands of refugees now. So the conditions in Jordan, in Turkey, in Lebanon are all facing extraordinary pressures. These are both economic pressures in terms of how do we take care of these refugees, but it's also political pressures because this war in Syria is becoming increasingly sectarian, and those sectarian divides are not limited to, to Syria itself. They spill over the borders. These are sectarian divides across the whole region. So you have a sectarian divide between Saudi Arabia and Qatar, the leading Sunni powers, versus Iran. You have the fight for regional hegemony, even in the Gulf. You're, you have a fight going on between Qatar and Saudi Arabia over which side is going to, to win out as the dominant force in, in Syria. So this so-called war in Syria is actually at least five wars that are, is dividing the whole region. Which, which brings me to the question today, uh, Secretary of State John Kerry talking about how Russia has now said that there are representatives from the Syrian government who are willing to sit down. This could happen in early June. But is it too late for peace talks to start when you're not just talking about, you know, the Syrian opposition, which, as you've already pointed out, is all over the place, right. and the government, but you're also talking about a region that's exploded. Absolutely. This, it's never too late. When there's a war going on, what you need is to de-escalate. And you need negotiations. You need diplomacy. There's, there's not going to be a military solution here. All there will be from the military is more dead Syrians. So there needs to be negotiations. And this move between the U.S. and Russia is a good first step. It will only have merit. It will only work if it is matched by an agreement by both sides, which means the U.S. and Russia, yes, but also Qatar and Iran, for instance, the major backers militarily of each side, if they agree to stop sending additional weapons, then we may see some possibility for this new diplomacy. If the weapons continue to flow into both sides and the war continues, then the diplomacy won't matter. Well, Phyllis Bennis, thank you for stopping by. I certainly appreciate it. Thank you.